Yes, people, it's Loki Man 07. Back. Take three, okay? Take three. I've tried to make this video mul multiple times within a short space of time. But um, usually I just turn on the shit and just go. But, you know, I'm having a long week, okay? I lost all my data. All my YouTube videos that I had saved up, my little dock holes and everything, it's all gone, long story. But we're back online, okay, we're back online. And I'm gonna have to start again. So yeah, that was a quick L for me. Um, uh, I'm just gonna get into something real quick, okay. So I, um, I just started to watch the movie Maleficent, simply based on the character's design, okay. Not really something I'm interested in or anything, but I thought, oh, okay, this is an interesting movie. Um, um, but what I did find in the movie is deep links to feminism, um, of course, which is a lot deeper than people think, okay. It's a culture based on a certain principle um, that can be found in mythology and religion um, <coughs> based on uh, behaviours of... Uh, characteristics or human traits that, that we call gods or nature's traits. I want to talk about some random things that I found because this is probably one of the most occulty films I've ever seen. Okay, um, you know, you know, just going into it, looking, it's 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 amazing how much stuff is packed into this film. Okay, this film is about the uh, archetype of Lilith, which is the mother goddess on the left hand side. Eve being the mother goddess on the right hand side, believe it or not. Okay. Um, Lilith herself is based on mythologies older than her. Um, I like to go into certain things like language and links to language. If you, you live in the Western world or the Northern Hemisphere, your language comes from Sanskrit and a uh, lot of sounds and things are linked okay and it's not easy to find you can't just pick up a dictionary or look online for a word and say yep that's it and it ends there it's the world is a lot deeper than that and this is why I say certain words are linked and that not based on just me saying so but based on deeper investigation okay and I want to get into how that works when I uh, get into the fact that Lily the word Lily which is linked to the words uh, white is where Lilith gets her name okay the goddess which is based on an even older goddess archetype right uh, Lilith isn't described as a goddess in anything in modern religion because that's how modern religion works that you only address one god everything else is either an angel or a demon or etc etc but in the older religions everything has the title God more time okay right that is linked to aspects of nature okay so first of all we've got to get into this we identify that um, Maleficent is uh, Lilith which is based on the Garden of Eden story right the story of Adam and Eve and in case you didn't know you pass through all of the zodiacs in the Bible the zodiacs are described to you in words so Adam and Eve represents the, um, the month of June which is the sixth month and it also represents the twins right the twins and the lovers okay that'll be Adam and Eve brother and sister husband and wife Okay, the children of God and in the sky uh, that is Gemini um, so is there any links to this the release of Maleficent is May 28th under the constellation Gemini so most people will have been watching that movie under the constellation Gemini if, if you've watched me do any of my occult breakdowns um, 
and I talk about dates of releases of films you will always spot these um, these uh, concurrencies okay constellations star signs and themes right so once again we're dealing with the Garden of Eden and the fall so okay the reason why Gemini is linked to the fall is because the, <coughs> the end date of Gemini 21st of June is uh, when the summer solstice start, uh, happens and then the Sun starts itself starts to fall okay so, so um, it's so that is so even in um, you know in nature this is the fall of the Sun okay all, all mythology or religion is based on the loop of nature and time okay if you have any idea of Gemini and its symbology the twins male and female masculine and feminine etc etc that should make sense at least okay um, so what I was saying about Lily meaning white okay so we're gonna go into the goddess Hera and of course um, who is the Greek equivalent of the Roman Juno where June gets its name okay um, so well, there's links again okay um, Lilith is a, an a, um, a version of this character goddess of marriages right so um, like I said she's Eve on the left hand side so she's the principle of marriage gone wrong um, feminine wrath scorn right and then you have um, Eve on the right hand side which is marriage gone right destiny dynasty etc etc right um, so let's get into this okay so we all know who Lilith is right she is the first wife of Adam okay the one that would not bow down to masculine will therefore her marriage was trash okay right, let's remember that um, and of course gave birth to um, demonic principle okay so her offspring caused chaos okay I'm not gonna say anything more than that think highly and you'll get it right <clears throat> um, pay attention to the natural world okay all this stuff all these psychologies of how things play out is in the writings of Asia, of the ancients okay right let's get into Hera and how she links to Lilith if you know anything about Lilith you'll get it straight away Hera in ancient Greek religion a daughter of the Titans Kronos and Rhea the Titans are the elder gods the old the old ones right um, Kronos is L aka Saturn the hidden one uh, and Rhea represents Sophia okay right if you uh, if you know anything about um, those deities, okay, Kronos basically being Yaldabaoth, okay. Anyway, sister wife of Zeus, son of God, okay. Zeus is son of God, right? Um, Kronos and the queen of the Olympian gods, okay. All right, so. Um, Zeus is also the son of uh, or the child of uh, Kronos and Rhea okay the Romans identify her with their own Juno so like I said uh, Juno representing the month where this is all takes part uh, Hera was worshipped throughout the Greek world and played an important part in Greek literature appearing most frequently as the jealous and rancorous wife of Zeus and pursuing with vindictive hatred the heroines who he beloved 
okay right so this is where you get the archetype of Lilith from Hera being before Hera being before Lilith right um, so this uh, whole um, jealous and rancorous rancorous meaning bitter vindictive you know the things that are attributed attributed to Lilith right um, but here's here's the thing right here's the catch um, Hera has many symbols but uh, she's directly linked to the lily flower and its creation okay in the mythologies um, the, the lily flower was born from Hera's milk and is associated with her Lilith herself is not the, the the woman in black that, that we see in modern times black and red she was actually in red and white either in a white dress or wrapped in a white snake okay um <clears throat> being the goddess of marriages okay is where we get the whole dressing your bride up in a white dress from okay um it represents virginity and purity the mother goddess let's get into this even more okay so now that we've got the links between Hera and Lilith um, let's talk about the movie okay so let's first of all the movie is just blatantly the story of Lilith and Lilith if you look up Li the biography of Lilith right it'll tell you that you know she's set upon the children of Adam right and she's linked to being uh, looming over children and torturing them etc etc um, killing them etc etc uh, cursing them etc etc whatever version right um, so let's get into this first of all um, just by the design of Maleficent um, it comes from the original design okay which is from the Sleeping Beauty the original Disney movie but um, which <clears throat> is also inspired by um, you know the evil woman archetype with the horns right um, the horns represent angels by the way or gods all right just so that you, just so you didn't know if you look at old European mythology all these guys have got weird horns look at Loki in Avengers it's got that stupid helmet with the horns on it um, <clears throat> anyway so as you can see if you look at the new design of Maleficent it's also following the same thing same just like a modern interpretation of, of Lilith um, the demon woman all right but let's look into what actually happens in the story you've got this character right in a garden in a mythical gar garden that seems to be cut off from the western from the rest of hu the world and humanity and it's like a fantasy land okay this is what's happening in a movie it's called the moors right and the moors are linked to swamps it's like the swamp or the the uh, you know the uh, the quarry something like so right and as you can look by the design of this garden it's like a garden with this um, massive lake in the middle to represent a moor you get me it's called the moor right it can also be translated as uh, black depending on what language you use well I I'm, I'm sure it means more as in a description of what the place is like this sea um, this little lake area right um, and when it starts off Lilith is just a little girl aka Maleficent is a little girl all right Maleficent is intended to be a villain okay remember what I said about earlier about uh, Lilith being the mother goddess on the left hand side switch it and the goddess of marriages so it's marriage gone wrong Eve is marriage gone right um, so her name Maleficent it's a it's it's original use is to mean um, literally as the world 
the word is um, described as mal efficient mal meaning um, bad or you know incorrect and efficient is efficient it's spelt the same with just a one F missing it's mal efficient not working in a productive way working in a bad way right so um, this retelling of Maleficent's story is once again because it's Disney um, uh, a Lilith redemption arc and I'm going to get into why Disney likes to do redemption arcs of mother goddesses on the left hand side in this video because uh, it's a concurrent thing so let's get into this so like I said it's all about the fall at the beginning of the movie Maleficent um, is like an angel even though she looks kind of like a demon she's got her horns like I said it re that just represents godhood like a halo okay um, and then she's got wings like an angel okay she's supposed to represent the mother goddess on the left hand side okay um, the, also the horns represent rulership the moors is her land the two horns represent a god in rulership like Odin okay so she is the queen of Moors right so when Adam and and Lilith were the only things in the garden she was the queen of Eden okay so anyway the boy she's a little girl there's a little boy that's her Adam okay that's her Adam she meets the little boy they bond okay this is in the film but they end up drifting apart he betrays her in the film there's a scene the scene where he betrays her he clips her wings right and I'm gonna prove to you that this represents a sexual act okay now sexual acts are linked to the number six and Satan okay that's why sex is called six I've explained that before because it's about falling it's about becoming attached to the physical realm and what it does it produce it produces another version of you now bound to the physical realm it keeps the physical realm active okay so every time people fall in love they fall right they become less spiritual more wanting to bond with this physical world that's what this is all about as you can see um, the, the word love is linked to the word evil in reverse with um, just pronunciation of the vowel as the difference um, <coughs> I would have <laughs> gone much more into this vowel, vowel evolution in my, the videos I lost what interchangeable vowels is to do with accenting and stuff like that so love backwards is evil backwards or evil right and it's all to do with the language what where we get the word love from it's a very unique um, translation of what in most European language would be amor or something amore and things like that and then you have English which comes from um, the modern word in of love comes from um, the 17th century where you know uh, English is directly linked to an occult literature now where, where we got the King James Bible and it influencing all sorts of um, media and stuff and how it was uh, pushed forward through Shakespeare and stuff like that which is also 17th century uh, the King James New Bible and stuff like that um, English is based around that which is a cult so it's where we get these word splitting and stuff from because it's purposefully done all right right so in my Hawkeye video if you've watched that I spoke about Capricorn and Christmas being linked to Satan and you know uh, the, the symbol of Capricorn that time is about satanic principle and Satan being uh, um, ruler of the physical realm is why you do th things t to tempt the young with wanting to bond with the physical world that that's all that psychology is about it's really simple stuff 
it's adherence to the god of physicality and the lower realm um by giving people temptations of the lower realm gifts and things that bind you to the physical world um when people don't get things at christmas or the things they want they feel unloved they feel they're unloved you get what i'm saying it's all about love okay it's really simple things it's not as deep as uh, re religion what have you believe but it still has deeper meaning okay <clears throat> so let's keep on track right with what is actually happening in the movie um we'll get more into the word stuff in a second okay so what happened in the movie um yeah maleficent gets older adam betrays her adam has his own agenda that wants to be king wants dynasty right and um the other half the, mo the the mother goddess on the right hand side is the actual queen that gets no play in this this um in in this this movie but of course because she is the queen um her dynasty and everything is what is comes into play and her relationship realistically with um uh this male character the emperor what have you the king right <clears throat> it realistically would be very hurtful for maleficent in the position that she's in so the jealousy and everything plays a part as well um because um her adam maleficent's adam it is has a new wife and um and has is having a child can you can you, so she's green with envy as the color scheme of the movie um portrays right so um what's it called what happens is just like in the mythologies she wants to curse um the the children right um the curse of cain everything is linked to this even though it's not in the bible but it's in the thing that the bible comes from right which is the torah okay that is the true old testament closer to the older scriptures than the actual testaments that we have today right there's a lot of missing pieces okay so just like in the mythologies she wants to mess with the bloodline of adam but in this movie she wants to m mess around with the bloodline of stefan who is this her adam steph stefan all right stephen stefan however it, all right so anyway um so this is the crux of the whole film um aurora his daughter right is uh set upon by a curse by maleficent boom right it p matches up with the mythology beat for beat okay it's insane okay so i could be taken out of context here a little bit right as someone that thinks too deeply on simple um, imagery in films and stuff right but let me tell you it's always ironclad bro right when it comes to writing things you need technique genius okay and information you can't build a world if you don't know how worlds work okay so every world you've ever seen is built upon occult explanations as to how an actual world exist it's as simple as that you must study the occult literature anyway right but let's get into this um is the scene of melissa losing her wings about sexuality in any way let's confirm right check this out angelo 
Angelina Jolie confirms a key Maleficent scene was about rape. I wonder which one that is. Maleficent is a worldwide all ages hit drawing children and adults alike to a story crammed with fairies, sword fights and the healing power of magic. It is also at least in part about rape. Many grown ups who have seen the film already suspected as much from the scene in which Angelina Jolie's Maleficent is violated by Char Charlotte Copel's or Copley, sorry, um, King Stefan, a man she trusted. He drugs her and cuts off her massive wings. Now, Jolie has confirmed that the scene deliberately echoes the two familiar beats of date rape narrative. We were very conscious, sorry, quote, we were very conscious, the writer, Linda Wolverton, and I, right, says Angelina Jolie, that it was a metaphor for rape, Jolie said, said this during an interview with the BBC Woman's Hour, okay? Jolie had spoken forcefully at the Global Summit to end sexual violence in conflict on Tuesday, demanding an end to rape as a tool of war. It is a myth that rape is an inevitable part of conflict, she said at the summit. There is nothing inevitable about rape, okay? So, so this story is about Lilith, not wanting to bend to the wills of Adam and um, Adam taking her anyway. That's what it's about. And then, um, which is an alternate story about what happened with Lilith. Trust me, it exists. Right? And because he didn't want to, uh, because she didn't want to uh, bend to his masculine urges, uh, it broke up their relationship and it ends up with Eve. Trust me okay so um even in their their the stuff that these hollywood people do which is about oh we're going to make about this and this and how right i'm going to continue reading this to, to tell you that it's about feminism also um it's not hard to imagine similarly impassioned speech about rape as used in hollywood narratives where it is more often used as a plot device to spit to, to spur the hero into action than any thoughtful consideration of the meaning of of the crime this is obviously from a feminist perspective they do not analyze movies well okay it's either the agenda or it's not right anyway Maleficent may have modeled messages the fact that Maleficent's entire motivation as a villain is rejected by a is 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 rejection by a man is not a great feminist message but it takes the metaphorical rape scene seriously so disney has put a rape scene in a child's film low key it is detectable in certain ways but if you know about the occult meaning of this stuff right you know exactly what it means okay so and they're also admitting it, but putting it in, in through through a narrative that the average man can understand. But really, it's about um, this story right here, the Garden of Eden. That's what it's about, right? I, I hope we're all up to speed. So yes, people, when it comes to the character Lilith, the character Lilith it is directly li linked. To the behavior of um, the feminist movement and the destruction of dynasty okay sounds crazy all right but as I'm going to show you right here the character Lilith the archetype is actually used as a feminist um, uh, icon right a point of reference even to the average person um, you know uh, somebody who has no idea about the, the occult or how deep the live archetype what it really means they don't really get it they just believe in the tales still look at this stuff as suitable for um, uh, pushing humanity forward right feminism is, is directly linked to the principle of Lilith and um, spawning children that will be taken by nature or God right and we'll get into that 
Now, obviously, I'm a grounded individual. I don't believe in magical men. I'm not religious. Um, and, I, and I believe in science. However, what I do believe is that um, mythology is ancient science taken out of context. Okay, It's completely decodable uh, to show you how things actually work in reality when you truly understand what they're saying. Things that sound ridiculous sound ridiculous because it, by translation it is ridiculous. But it actually has um, allegory that is concurrent with human behavior, animal behavior, and the behavior of nature. We think that everything is random. Everything isn't random. It's a set of actions and uh, and um, reactions in a in a um, within a set of rules like a game. That's what life is. You're not going to do anything that is um, outside of the rules of nature. Okay, nothing. You can't invent anything. You can just see how something works or reverse engineer it. Okay. You can't actually invent something that doesn't actually exist, which is very, very important to understanding what's going on on planet Earth. Okay, so these characters, Lilith, Eve, Adam, are supposed to be the progenitors of humankind, but well, what they actually represent is states of human consciousness. Okay, or uh, the beginning of what makes you a human being and the reason why you have an Adam on the right hand side and an Adam on the left hand side and an Eve on the right hand side and an Eve on the left hand side is because we are binary natures we are both the probability of good and evil uh, we we are probability okay so e shit could have gone right for Eve shit could have gone wrong for Eve God ex exist as those probabilities existing concurrently all right so that is the uh, the first clue to decoding things like the Bible and stuff like that, right? And any mythology, right? And this is why I always say all gods are linked, all goddesses are linked, and act like it's all the same character. When I speak about them, I just m mispronounce, I mean, misstate them all the time, just like it, it's in one pool. If I'm talking about Mars, I'll probably call him Aries at a time. If I'm talking about Saturn, I'll probably call him Kronos or L or something. Like, it's just the same guy. Because it is. Anyway, let's continue. Um, let's read this out. Lilith and feminism. The tragedy of Lilith is compounded when you consider that she was seen as a figure of fear amongst some cultures until the late 20th century, which was yesterday, bro. Many depictions portrayed her as a threat to women, a baby thief, the cause of infant death, and a seductress of men. However, the feminist movement saw interested parties in society take a second look at Lilith's story. They claimed she was unfairly demonized by Jewish mythology for her refusal to submit to Adam. With the fight for freedom from gender roles in the 1960s, Lilith became a feminist icon representing rebellion and liberation. Now, I went through a whole tirade at the beginning talking about Lilith is Hera. So, how can the Jews, right? Right. Let's just say that isn't true. How can the Jews demonize Lilith if they invented Lilith as a concept since it comes from Jewish mythology? That's because Lilith ex existed before Jewish mythology as other characters. So that's how that um, paragraph makes sense because if that wasn't true that paragraph would make no sense but it does make sense because of what I'm saying okay it's the truth of the matter so like I said in the beginning of the video this is a Lilith redemption story the redemption arc of Lilith right here that's what this movie is okay simple as and since i said said um you know she comes from juno she comes from hera etc right 
when they retold this story as the redemption they went back to greek mythology they made aurora persephone in this show okay eden is the underworld eaton eden is always the underworld right whenever it comes to this parallel world existing with earth it's and it's not heaven it's the underworld that's where adam and eve was okay right it's why satan's there and everything right the snake in the garden right it's his realm that is the dreamscape okay right that's the two worlds that exist concurrently you when you're awake and you when you go to sleep that's why the underworld is linked to earth okay boom it's also why these characters are linked to states of being and consciousness and knowledge because the dreamscape is where you get your imagination from your thoughts from how to act and everything same place you go to where you when you dream is the same place you go to to think your own brain right that's the underworld let's continue now this stuff like i said um lilith being linked to feminism and once again i'm going to refer to the video the beginning of the video because i explain the symbols of lilith herself which is to be wrapped in a snake also if i refer back to persona occult study episode 2 or part 2 i spoke about the character of makoto and how it's linked to the high priestess card okay and how the high priestess card represents eve energy of the garden of eden the two pillars two trees okay and once again i refer to her as um the high priestess as eve as mary as lilith etc etc all the same character bro all the same character um mary is eve on the right hand side magdalene is on the left hand side okay um i could make a whole video about that trust me right there's so much allegory okay so much allegory but my whole point is when i did the occult study thing i explained how the number two symbol represents the snake okay and the first woman also represents the snake lilith is the first woman right and as i'm speaking right now i'm going to put on sc screen um random celebrities representing this stuff even the symbol of the number two ra with a snake and stuff like, like it's just it's just right there right feminism is pushed by um icons okay um nobody wouldn't be so up on things in modern culture if it wasn't for the for the thing that pushes modern culture which is government sponsored which is the entertainment industry so all that stuff is in your face if you're in the knowledge and before we continue here right i don't know if you've noticed but this image that i've been using to represent feminism has an owl on it and i broke down the whole thing about owls linked to the mother goddess um in my hawkeye video now it seemed random in the video superstitious etc but like i says it's not me and i speak about all how all the goddesses are linked so even in this um this completely innocent article right just randomly on the internet right people within this this knowledge are using certain imagery on women okay disney trying to get women to take over marvel and homosexuals of course so the imagery that they use is important to the mind whether you understand it on a subliminal level or not it does not matter this is not magic okay this is just normal human psychology okay so people um so that's feminism in a nutshell with deeper understanding right 
the common man is not the source of the movement they are followers they sometimes if you trace the source of the movement and you trace things so what are the people that invented this stuff on you will find what what is playing out on the people so um so pe people that are not into feminism and stuff uh, that are looking in it, at it from the opposite everything has an opposite so people that anytime you invent something you invent its opposition so there must be people that are not into feminism so they're going to analyze it from a different perspective right it doesn't matter what you're into what your religion is there's always somebody analyzing it from a different perspective that you cannot see okay um, whether it's false or true you're not going to see it because you're going to be biased towards it um, you're not even going to see where they get the fallacy from right you just no comprende right that's just human psychology 101 right the set of rules that we talk about so um so feminism is is, is associated with angry uh uh spiteful women of course there's a truth to this um uh women that are anti-male of course there's a truth to this it doesn't matter what anyone wants to spin that is going to play out in reality because that is the lilith archetype um both lilith and hera are in a state of discord with masculine energy you get me uh it, so um women put, uh, uh valuing that principle are going to value that principle it's just as simple as that whether they're they're schooled on the principle or not they're still learning the principle without the mythos okay so so when women do not value the uh the eve archetype which is linked to generation uh wealth and dynasty um you get certain things have playing out in the real world in the the physical world so whatever's happening in the mental world gets pushed out onto the physical world so um and that's what these stories are representing these allegories it's states of being that you can push out into the physical world so when when um so if women are absorbing lilith principle they're going to push out what that the story is that allegory is going to play out into reality so let's say for example you get a load of women that they they battle men right upon sight their lilith principle will make them think okay this man is kind of my enemy i must be suspicious of him okay i'm not going to 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 reason with him i'm uh, it's my way or the highway that leads to destruction of marriage which leads to children that are random right it's like r roll of the dice so this is where you get the demonic children from doesn't mean your children are going to be literally demons it means children that are not in order okay so so how did chicago happen right how does chicago happen where you get in such and such a hundred deaths every other day, etc., etc. How do you get that to happen? You just get lots of women that just believe that they can't perceive anything but Lilith energy because they're just absorbing the entertainment industry, lack of culture, etc., etc. Okay, and this is also linked to where God claims to take a hundred of Lilith's children a day because she spawns thousands. Because she's not a real person. It's things that are playing out in the physical world. That makes sense? Let's go. So what we've gathered so far is that Maleficent is based on uh, the principle of Lilith. Lilith, Lilith herself is based on uh, goddesses of marriage. But we've also come to the conclusion, if you're catching on, that um, 
the state of being that is Lilith or that principle is what is being pushed as a template for what the modern woman should be which is a it's, it, it's quite an interesting study okay quite an interesting study so uh, of course um, um, I won't name them all but all of these movements that feminism is in a group with are actually of course government sponsored and um, so which is weird because you know the government is sponsoring the rebellion which makes no sense okay um so if the 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 um the rebellion in society is being pushed by um the governing bodies what exactly are you rebelling against well of course the answer is simple the self okay simple as that all these rebellions are rebellions against the self okay this is why identity politics and stuff is so important because the self is identity right all government uh, manipulated and sponsored okay so now I'm going to get into the principle of language okay so I mentioned Kronos in this video Kronos's wife was Rhea okay Kronos being the sky god okay Rhea being the earthly goddess mother goddess okay um, so Rhea spelled R-H-E-A means earth okay earthly principle okay the mother goddess okay and from Rhea um, and and into Rhea vice versa we have um, other sounds okay like uh, Gaia uh, Terra Maya okay now all these sounds are linked we all know this um, the word Gaia um, we, we, we has done so much linguistic evolutions it's become words like ground and geo right off coming from Gaia okay to mean earth land okay I will have examples on the screen then you have um, of course uh, Terra that's become words like terrestrial terrain terrace Terry okay um also meaning uh, earthly okay ground land okay and then you have maya right linked to rhea also which becomes all sorts of words like math um going back it comes from uh ma'at okay um it, it's uh evolved into mother Ma'am, Madame, you get me, all coming from this same Rhea. So we can see that language has done all sorts, ca can do all sorts of, um, uh, I call it linguistic dances through not only time, but of course space, like physical space. Like, are you close to the source of? Of the word or you're far away what's your accent it all changes the language but stays within language okay um, all southern hemispheric languages can be linked and I will show you this as an egg uh, show you perfect examples so I say that um, Lilith is an inverted Eve right and Eve is to live I will show you examples of the on the screen of all um, evolutions of Eve, right? Words and names, and they are in multiple languages. All come from the word Eve, and they all mean life or to live, etc. Okay. Can also mean the start of life. So you have the starting of something. We use the word Eve to be before something 
you'll have Christmas Eve, the eve of my wedding, etc, etc. Right? It's the seed, the, the, pre, the seed that birthed the event, which is the previous day. Okay? Um, let's get into this. And just like all gods have a left hand and right hand path, all principles and states of being have a left hand and right hand path to love. Right? <clears throat> Everybody has almost every act of violence, racism, etc has been out of the preservation and love for the self to live it is to be evil to eat from the underworld which is where we are okay um and everything we eat is something that is living okay so we must take life to eat to to live is evil okay that is the principle of this whole thing right so obviously, uh, life, love, the Eve principle, inverted, is evil, which is the Lilith principle, okay? So yes, there is the good part of, be of being alive, the Eve principle, and then there's the bad part, the Lilith principle, which is inverted Eve, okay? So this is where we get the evil from live. So if Eve is to live, Lilith is to be evil. Now, um, Lil right just like how eve has done all sorts of linguistic dances through um language time and space lilith has also done all these linguistic dances through time and space based on her older incarnations also such as hera but let's get into this um lil lil lily where we get the name for the lily flower um doesn't mean lily flower it means pure white innocence okay so that's the innocent part of being alive no dynasty nothing the innocent potential okay um and that's what we call the the lily flower okay T to be white is to be blank okay um c people consider the darkness to be nothingness in all language besides english um, white c can be translated to nothingless in French it's blanc um, in all sorts of languages it's blanc or blanca okay except for English where it just becomes white right but it, it's um, the innocent to be painted upon um, linked to feminine energy okay um, believe it or not okay um, Things can, perceive, can be perceived on the left or the right hand side. Black can be perceived as um, negative. White can be perceived as the negative force. Okay, it's all about perspective. On the screen I will have multiple versions of the word lily in multiple languages. Okay, in all these languages that is the word for lily or the lily flower. You will notice the Italian gig, giglio. Right, Giglio, and um, of course, uh, Lilith being linked to um, the whore aspect as well. Um, you can see how Gigolo or Gigolo can come into play. Okay, all language and sounds are linked. Okay, I, I, I could make a whole video, okay, just going through words and and linking them okay but um here, here's something interesting okay here's something interesting no no matter where you go in the world um you will find this link to not only um the lily flower and the sounds that 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 the the, the people use but links to hera also or the goddess of marriages so let's say we scrap this whole European stuff and we look how uh, we go to chi China where the sound lily has com be com completely removed, okay? Right, and in the Chinese you have this, the, the word uh, bahe no hua, bahe no hua, or hua meaning flower, right? And 
believe it or not, it's linked to Hannah or Anne or Diane and also linked to flower. Okay, right? So the Hoa part is flower, but Bahi is um is a is 100 okay and 100 is linked and you can look this up yourself what 100 is linked to union so bahi no hawa which translates as 100 union flower is used at weddings linked to hera okay goddess of marriages right okay if you go to japanese yuri no hana once again you find this sound anna diane linked to the flowering um and of course um yuri um linked to lily okay because there is no less sound in 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 the japanese language there's no lali lule lo in the hiragana okay so then you get this whole um replacement with y's and r's for sounds and of course all vowels are interchangeable as exhibited in the collection of european words for lily okay now when we get into hebrew this sound lil all right as exhibited in the european translations um which is to mean white because comes um the term demon okay so when hera hera's milk from her breast spawned the lights of the sky above she also spawned the demons below um that would be the lily flowers in the lower realm and the milky way in the higher realm so she made stars in the sky and uh, uh, and physical matter on the land which would be the the lily flower with her breast milk okay that's what the it's getting at so um in the hebrew translation like i said to live to be upon the earth in this mythology is evil so the milk that comes below becomes the story of demons okay um uh, um the demons in the underworld um is our potential okay if you look at the world and what can happen the demons is human the devil is mankind okay so um Lil uh, becomes the meaning of the offspring of Lilith, okay, and uh, Lilith, so the Lilith is the offspring and Lilith herself um, is the progenitor of these offspring, right, linked to the goddess of marriages Hera also, linked to the sound Lil, okay. Like I showed you at the beginning of this thing, Lilith's original color code was white and red, right? Red hair, white dress. The black is the modern interpretation inspired by witchcraft, which is the inspiration of feminism. Okay. Simple as that. I I I would like to go into this stuff further if if you would like to hear more on these principles a little bit deeper and go into language a little bit deeper if you enjoy that stuff comment below okay um this is loki man 07 um i'd like to do these little video lectures okay most of the gaming stuff i just put out there just to um you know keep the channel active Right. If you're into the gaming stuff and you pop, um, bump into this stuff and you made it this far, GG's. Right. Um, I will post game stuff all the time. I just I I do it, so I post them. But um, thank you for watching. Peace, people. Peace.